Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here popping in. Now, if you're first time seeing my videos, I got a lot of videos, so check them out. I want to talk to the men today and really ask them the question, didn't know how to say this, but is marriage beneficial to a man? I saw a post some time back and it was kind of saying like, you know, what is the benefit of a man getting married? Like, what is this? Like, what? why is he excited about joining his income and possibly losing it all in divorce or losing half in divorce, going from being able to date multiple women, be with multiple women, going to one woman. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I'll be honest with you as a man, I've been on both sides of this thing. So it's not coming from, this is not coming from a man who has never been out there and, and done his thing. I was out there, you know, one of the absolute worst. So I lived that life. And I saw that. And and yes, it, it was like you are you can do what you want to do. You don't have to answer to anybody. You can have a different woman every night. You can it was certain times that, you know, three women in a day, you know. And when I say in a day, I'm not talking about three dates. I'm talking about, you know, all the way. And and that was as a broke man. That was as an average man. That was as an everyday man. And every man was doing this. Every man that I knew you personally was doing the same thing. Now, men with money, men who had millions, those men, they could have eight women in a day. Mm -hmm. The most I ever heard was 10 women in a day. So this video is for men, okay, ladies? I don't want to hear all y'all, you know, what? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is so disgusting. Ew. That's how y'all are? Listen, it's a whole nother world out there, okay? And But men know what, what men know. Men know what's going on. And most of this stuff, it never comes out. And the reason why I'm speaking is because that's the reason why we're so broken as a society today. Because of the man laws and the man code and all of this stuff. Let me, um, I just finished the coaching session. I need to save my notes and close it. But listen to me. Uh, that's going to take too much. Listen to me. I want you to think about this, fellas. And I want you to hear me when I tell you, okay? Here I was at 21 when I met my wife. By that point, I had been with over 100 women. Now, I knew guys who was at 300, 600. Probably the least that I knew around that age was a guy who was at 5 to 10 women. You know, and those guys were either they were below the height line you know below the poverty line of height or over the weight line you know above the weight line to where women didn't want a guy that weight that size or didn't want a guy that height and so they had a little bit more of a challenge being able to talk to women now i will tell you and every man knows this and you know this as a man women on average, are not hard to get. On average, it's not it's not hard. Majority of the time is on the first date. On the first date, if it's not on the first date, it's within the first three dates that women going all the way. I do not understand it. I don't fully understand it. But this is what you got to realize, you know, as, I, as I'm reading the Bible and I read the Bible and what I want the Christians to understand is that I try not to speak Christianese to people who are not Christian because it's, it's a waste of breath. And some things are just common sense. Not everything has to be inside of religion, but even outside of religion, there are benefits to marriage. So but me and my belief system, it's actually a sin to be sleeping with someone outside of marriage. So that was another thing for me. Now, a lot of people say, I don't see the need for marriage. I don't see the need for marriage. That means that they are not, their faith does not tell them that fornication is a sin against a violation of the laws in their faith. And somebody sent me a video of the young lady on the reality TV show, and she's been with her guy for 
many, many years. And she's saying, I don't think we need to get married. Like, I don't see the benefit of it. I thought that would be the end all be all, but I don't see the benefit of it. And he was like, no, I still want to get married though. And so that lets me know she doesn't have a faith conviction because when you have a faith conviction, you're going to get married because it's a sin to be in fornication. So she doesn't have a faith conviction. She may not have a faith, you know, or she may not really believe or live it. And so you have to take that into consideration. But what I need you to understand as a man, and I'm, I'm to get right to it, I'll be honest with you. The number one reason why marriages fail is because of a man's inability, not even an inability, but because of a man's refusal to grow and to change. Because guess what? Most men struggle in one area or another. And what I mean by this is most men cannot or refuse to be 100% faithful. That's, that's the number one, being 100% faithful. Now, let me ask you this. If you can be man enough to be 100% faithful to your woman and you have chosen the woman that fits you, you've taken time with her, you know her personality, you know her strengths, you know her weaknesses, you understand these things about her, then guess what? You won't have problems in marriage if you are 100% faithful. And what I mean by 100% faithful, I mean not watching nasty movies. I got to watch the words I use because it'll trigger it and it'll, you know, flag the video. But not watching nasty movies. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The P word, O-R, spell it on out. Not watching those. I'm also talking about not emotionally cheating meaning in the DM on social media or having a work wife or having a best friend, a female friend that you confide in and talk to and tell her your frustrations, your worries, your hopes, your dreams. You cannot have that if you are married. You cannot have that. Your woman, your wife has to be your best friend. Your wife has to be your best friend. If you are willing and you are capable of that, your marriage won't have any problems if you marry the right woman. But in order to marry the right woman, you have to be the right man. Because if you're not right in yourself as a man, if you gamble, if you get drunk, if you're getting high, if you're into nasty movies, if you're still in the club, if you're doing all of these things that are immoral, immoral or immature or irresponsible, guess what? You see the world not for what it is, but for what you are. So you will see a woman who is not a good woman and you will pick her to be your wife and that's because she has vices and that are similar to your vices. And because you don't see the error in your ways, you won't see the error in her ways. But when you chastise yourself and you discipline yourself as a man to grow, to grow, I'm talking excellence. I'm talking greatness. I'm not talking mediocrity when you grow as a man when you stop doing things that will divert your attention that will steal all of your focus that will hinder your progression that will shorten your lifespan that will harm your body and and think about it go down the list of of your habits even with the nasty movies what this is doing is this is feeding lust it's feeding lust. It's intensifying your desire for strange women, for other women, for random women. It's increasing this lustation, this spirit that's in you. So it makes you start to just 
goggle over all of these women that you pass to where it becomes a sickness, to where you are just so infatuated with the female body that you have to literally look at every single woman and not just look at her, but you got a picture, you got to go all the way there. And it's because of what you've been feeding your mind and what, and, and when you feed that it grows and it grows and it gets so big that it will consume you. It will devour you. And that's what you got to understand. So that's on the spirit side of things, the spiritual side of things. Now, the same thing, if you're in the club, strip club or regular club, you are feeding lust, which is increasing your desire for random women, strange women, other women, which eventually turns into temptation, which then leads you to one night you've had too many to drink and you just go up to her and you say what you're thinking. And guess what? She's all for it. She's with it. The next thing you know, you're in the back seat doing what it takes to reproduce. And you got a woman at home waiting on you who allowed you to go out because she feels like she doesn't want to be controlling and that's what men do. So she lets you go out and she's sitting there playing the fool while you out on the courage juice and you got liquid courage in you and you approaching these different ladies and you find the one that's ready, that's down for the cause. She's single, she lonely, she desperate and she got her own place. So y'all leave the club at 12, 12 30, one o'clock. You done went to her house, had a few more drinks and she spread eagle. You leave in her house three o'clock. You home 3 15, 3 30. Club let out at three. So your woman at home thinking you had a great night out with the boys and you done pick you up something in the club and then took home and she and your woman is none the wiser. Listen, bro, I done been there. I know what's going on, but you hurting yourself because guess what? When your life is out of order, now you're on the liquid courage. The first thing they tell you in, in school is what does that affect? Your judgment. So now because you didn't have any protection because you was telling yourself that you are faithful, you are telling yourself you are a good man, but you put yourself in a place to be tempted. So now you are in a place to be tempted, but you're not prepared to handle the temptation that comes. So the next thing you know, because you were trying to be a good man, but your actions were not lined up with it, your choices were not in line with what your mouth was saying, you end up sleeping with this woman unprotected. And the next thing you know, your woman is at home and she is got some cooking in the oven. And now you got another woman and now she finna have some cooking in the oven. That's how it happened. And this is happening so much. I, I did not know this was happening like this because this it didn't happen like that for me. And I was I was out there. But today I'm doing the QA some days on um Instagram, and I just have never in my life read so many women say he got me cooking in the oven. And I don't even know if they're going to flag the P word because they got this new law about, you know, video that's made for. So he got me cooking something in the oven and she cooking something in the oven. What am I going to do? So and y'all know what I'm talking about, cooking in the oven, reproducing. So and I've just never seen that at this rate. I'm like, how did 10 women 10 different women write me and say that they are expecting and another woman expecting from the same man. And then, and I, and I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to bet that a lot of times y'all boys 
look like the back of a 67 Chevy. You know, that's that's the sad thing about this. We don't even have to look good. We don't even have to look good to have multiple women. You literally could look like who shot John and forgot to kill him and have you three, four women that's on their bike. That's the sad part about today. But even though that's the case, you as a man, you got to do what's right for you. You got to protect yourself because, yeah, it's out there and it's easy, but you taking advantage of it, guess what? You're going to get a gift that keep on giving. And it might be in your body or it might be the reproduction of your DNA that you were not ready to provide for. It, it, or it might be both. You might get both. You might get both. And here's the thing. You got to think about that as a man. So guess what? That is another reason that makes marriage so beneficial and such a blessing. Because when you get married and you're willing to be faithful, guess what? It cuts out the riffraff. I remember being out there. I remember being out there and just having to fall on a knee and pray after every time and and just like lord lord please lord lord please i messed up again lord please don't let me have nothing lord please don't let me have nothing lord lord in the name of jesus and now i'm praying and i'm like and my prayer wasn't probably getting past the ceiling past the roof because of the life i was living but i sure was praying i was like lord please lord I will not do this again. I will not do this again. Please don't let me have nothing. And then it's like, okay, Lord, please don't let her be. Please don't let her be expecting. Please, please, please. I'm not ready. I'm not going to do this again. And that's what you're out here doing. That's what you're out here doing. You you playing Russian roulette. You, you gambling with your life. You gambling with your future. And for what? Because you're insecure? Because you're full of pain? Because your dad left your mom and you didn't have a father growing up? Because your mom abandoned you? Why? You got to get to the root cause of your pain. You got to identify that and you got to see how that's making you show up in the world. What's making you so bitter? What's making you so vindictive? What's making you so judgmental? What's making you a savage? What's making you lie and hurt and cheat and steal and manipulate and deceive? What's making you do that? See, you got to get to the root cause. You're going to need to go to mymentor.life. That's a website, mymentor.life, and book you some sessions with some coaches so you can get to the root cause of your pain because you got to identify the cause. Then you got to identify the effect. You got to be able to see what is this doing in your life? How is this affecting you? And then you got to be able to take note of the results that you are getting. So what are you getting? You're getting a headache. You're getting anxiety. You're getting stress. You having bouts with depression because you're feeling lonely. You're feeling lost. You're feeling confused. You're dealing with different women, but you don't feel a real connection. And because of who you are, you are judging her and you're seeing her as a reflection of you when she could be completely pure. She could be completely pure and nothing is wrong with her. She could be an absolute amazing woman. But because you are a dog of a man, you then assume she is a dog of a woman. And because you are so nasty and you've been hurt in the past, because you were nasty and chose a nasty woman and she was nastier than you and she played the game more savagely than you. She hurt you. Now you scarred. So now every other woman paying the price for what the last woman in the past did to you. And the other women don't deserve it. They did nothing to deserve it. Didn't do nothing for it or to it. And you making them pay. Because of your pain that you refuse to address and because of the pain that you keep running from. When God then created you to be able to process your pain, heal your pain, and then bring peace and prosperity to the life of a woman. See, I need you to understand this, my brother. I need you to hear me on this right here, okay? So when you out here and you going from woman to woman 
and you're not checking yourself and you're not growing as a man, guess what you're doing? You lying to yourself and you plan yourself. And then what happens is you start to judge these women. So now you're going from woman to woman. Oh, ain't no good women. Ain't no good women. Guess what? I'm a good man today. So I see good women a dime a dozen. It's so many. It's it's way too many good women. But you know why I can see that? Because I'm a good man. When I was a no good man, I couldn't see good women. Everyone was flawed. No one was good enough. And then guess what? You're going to eventually meet you a good woman to where... Even though you ain't no good, you still going to be able to see her good. You still going to be able to see this is a real woman. And that's where the challenge come in at. Because now, are you going to try to deceive her, manipulate her, trap her, and break her down to come to your poor, pitiful, broke, busted, and disgusted level? And when I say broke, busted, and disgusted, I'm not talking about your bank account. I don't care if you got millions. I'm talking about your spirit man. Are you broke, busted, and disgusted? And you want this woman to come to your level, to play and to wallow in the mud like a pig because you choose to live a piggy lifestyle, a muddy lifestyle, a nasty, a dirty lifestyle. So you got this good woman who want to be a good woman, but she ready for love and she looking for a man. Are you going to play the role and pretend to be the man of her dreams then play on her insecurity, play on her ignorance, the things she doesn't know, the things that she hasn't come to, uh, she doesn't have any resolve in these areas. So she's a good woman, but she still has not made the decision to save herself unto marriage. So are you going to manipulate her and get her into a place where she drops her guard and she's vulnerable and then she gets in the bed with you? And then... You put the reproduction in her, and then because she a good woman, she gonna keep it. She because she gonna live with her choices, so she not going down to the clinic, the the to, to try to escape the choice because she chose willingly to lie down, and this what come from lying down without protection. So she say, look, I, I got to live with this. This was my choice. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not finna go try to take care of this. I got to take care of it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a mother. But you was lying and you were cheating and you was being a dog on the low. But you were deceiving her to make her think you Prince Charming. So now you got her on her back. Now y'all got one on the way. Now what you going to do as a man? You going to man up and be a real man and, and be the representative that you showed her? Or you going to say, oh, gotcha. Up the creek without a paddle, trapped, and then go do your thing. Go go start cheating, go start controlling, manipulating because you know she wants more than anything in the world to have a family. And she wants more than anything in the world for the human she brings into the world to have a father in the home. So she will start to compromise and sacrifice her self-worth and her self-respect just because she does not want to be a single parent because that was not the plan. That's not how she was raised. That's not what, what the plan was, but she got on her back because she had not come to the decision, to the conclusion to save herself unto marriage. So that one mistake that she made, which was choosing to sleep, with you who you know you manipulating and you lying so now she feels stuck she feels trapped and you you played the game the best it could be played but guess what my brother you playing yourself you playing yourself you ain't you you hurting your lineage you hurting your family you ain't hurt nobody else you ain't hurt my family you hurting your lineage because if you sorry guess what your relationship gonna be sorry and if your relationship gonna be sorry guess what your child gonna be sorry be until they become an adult and learn how to be how to heal from their brokenness but guess what if i'm doing right and what you brought into the world is struggling with all kind of stuff I'm raising mine 
to avoid what you're raising. So it ain't going to hurt me and mine. It's going to hurt you and your lineage. You plan yourself. And if you refuse to grow and to consecrate your heart and mind, then guess what? Each generation could get worse. That's what we call generational curses. So each generation could get worse. I need to get going here. I might have to do my part to it because I got a coach in a little bit. Each generation could get worse. Do I got to coach again? Yeah, I got to coach again. And so, well, you say, well, well, I, well, I ain't that bad, man. What you talking about, man? Hey, ain't nothing wrong with smoking a little bit. Man, ain't nothing wrong with going to the club, man. Man, what you talking about, man? Man, you old lame, bro. You old lame. You old square. Man, ain't nobody on all that, man. You on old, man, all that. You you believing in that old Christianity, man. That's because you old slave, man. That, that's the white man religion, man. You on a white man religion. Guess what, bro? I'm peaceful. I'm happy. I'm blessed and highly favored. Where you want to take it at? We could talk about this thing mentally. We could talk about this thing spiritually. We could talk about this thing emotionally. We could talk about this thing financially. When you need to see my closet, that means something to you. You need to see my garage. Because I got the fruits of the spirit. And, and, I, and I see what that has produced. So I know because guess what? I was you. I was in rebellion. I was in denial. I was saying, oh, that lifestyle lame. That lifestyle lame, man. Living living like that old Bible teach, man. Living like the old Christ, man, all that. Blonde hair, blue eyes, slavery, religion, man, all that lame. I was the same. I was in the same. I wasn't saying that, but that's what my actions were showing. I was there. So I done seen what that's like. Misery, misery, lying to yourself, misery and lying to yourself. And that's the worst lie you could tell is a lie to yourself because you know you hurting. You know you lonely. You know you empty. You know you broken and you know you want better. You know you want better, but the reason why you don't have better is because the sacrifice is too painful. So for you to die out to yourself, for you to crucify your flesh, for you to crucify the lust and the actions that lust produces, you feel like it's going to take you out. And it won't. I guarantee you, you will not stop breathing if you stop feeding lust with nasty movies in the club and fornication or adultery. If you stop feeding lust, I guarantee you, it will not take you out. You're going to be just fine. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to rewire your brain. You're going to break generational curses. You're going to build mental strength, emotional strength. You are building your emotional intelligence. So what this faithfulness is going to do, when you become faithful, and then after becoming faithful, you become a whole man, meaning that you operate from a place of love. So, so men struggle with marriage because you either one, want to be unfaithful or two, you want to be controlling. You don't want to submit unto the woman. Instead, you just want her to submit unto you. But y'all have to submit unto one another because guess what? Being faithful to her is being in submission to her. Treating her with respect, not controlling her. You know, I'm not, man, my wife, she growing every year and I'm looking at my wife and I'm like, Every day she's doing some kind of maintenance. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Like, girl, what you doing? Every day is packages coming from, from Amazon. I'm like, did you just shop all day? I'm like, what in the world is going on? I'm like, what you got today, baby? Oh, I got my I got my lashes and I then I got my eyebrows and then I got my nails. And then tomorrow, baby, what you got going on today? Oh, got my wax and uh got the gym. The next thing, babe, what you got going on today? Oh, got my hands and my feet today. What you got today? Oh, got my hair today. I'm like, my goodness, all you do is maintenance? And so I'm looking at this thing, but guess what? That benefiting me, looking good. She looking good, smelling good, everything good. And so I'm like, this is the benefits of marriage. But see what happened is, 
If I'm trying to control her, oh, that's not necessary. Oh, that, oh, that's spending too much. You spending too much. That ain't necessary expense. That how that's how that. And that's how I used to be. And guess what? I was broke, busted, and disgusted here, and here. So what that made my wife broke, busted, and disgusted. So then I'm out and I'm looking around and I'm seeing all of this. But then what I didn't realize, the reason why the grass looked green, greener over there is because they watering it. I then cut the water off because I'm too worried about how much it costs. So now my wife ain't getting her nails, hands and feet done, split in, split edges, split ends, trimmed up, getting grazed, dyed, getting, you know, microblade, getting the, the, the lashes. You know, and not the caterpillar. She get natural. It look natural, okay? Just be clear about that. You know, and taking care of herself. Facials, massages, you know, getting a wax where she want to wax. You know, all of that. And so, if when she wasn't doing that, then guess what? Everything else looked good. But but what I realized, it looked good because it's getting watered. The grass getting watered. And guess what? The water bill higher. But when I stopped trying to be controlling and I say, baby, do you? Do you? Guess what? She went from being a diamond in a brown bag to being a diamond in a Tiffany's box. Pristine, looking good. So listen to me, fella. Listen to me. And, and I know y'all ladies don't think men listen, but men listen. Men listen. Now, listen to me. Or well, they listen when it's something that's real. You, and if you're a man and you got this far, and you ain't shame, put be blessed in the comments. Now, y'all gonna see probably one man in there. It might be, uh, what's the brother name? Jay Diller. And my other brother, uh, CJ. Now, listen to me. You gonna have a choice to make. And if you can stop being promiscuous, and you can be faithful, and you can stop being controlling. And when I say controlling, I mean being jealous, insecure, and domineering, trying to be a dictator, trying to be a tyrant. And you let this woman be who she called to be. And listen to me, you become who you need to become in every area of life, mind, body, and spirit. You submit, you surrender to God. If you a believer, if you're not a believer, God bless you. I, 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 God bless you. I, I, God bless you. I would not choose that lifestyle, but God bless you. Hey, do you, fella. But listen to me. When you come in submission to your higher calling, to the higher power, and you grow and you become the man that you need to be, guess what? The type of woman that you used to like ain't going to look good no more. It's a lot of women that God chasing after. I look at them, I'm like, <coughs> I'm about to throw up in my mouth. That don't look good to me. When I came, when I became a good man, a whole different type of woman looked good to me. And guess what? I realized my wife is perfect. She is perfect because I knew that the good man in me, I had, I was looking through those lenses, not from the dog in me. And so guess what? I realized the way my wife dress is perfect. I don't want to tell her how to dress. What she want to do with her free time is perfect. I don't want to tell her where to go and where not to go. She ain't doing nothing. She ain't going nowhere that I disagree with. She's not in the club. She's not in the casino. She's not, she not doing none of that. So the places that she go, I'm totally fine with it. Totally fine with it. The way she, what she feed her mind, I'm totally fine with it. Because I chose the right woman. So the way she dressed, listen to me. The way she do her eyelashes, the way she do her eyebrows, the way she do her hair, the way she does her makeup, everything is perfect. And I don't have to give her any instruction. I ain't got to tell her nothing. Because I chose the right woman. But I had to choose the right woman by becoming the right man. See, I had to shift, and I was not perfect, neither was she. But the areas where I was not perfect in, she had some areas she was not perfect in, but as I grew, she grew. The oil flow from the head. So if you're supposed to be the head of the household, you got to lead with love. 
You got to lead with growth. And if you're not leading with love and if you're not leading with growth, then guess what? Nothing is happening for the good of your relationship. And so now what happens is when you get married and you are faithful and you are loving and you are caring, here's what happens. What happens is, and if you're a woman and you feel like a man ain't going to watch this, but you got a boyfriend and let's say you got to go on a break or you got to break up with him and he want to get you back, make sure he watch this. Make sure he watch this and make sure you see him in the comments saying, be blessed. And make sure he able to give you a rundown, a summary with some notes of what he heard on here. So now listen to me, brother. When you take and you can be faithful and you can be loving, you can be the man you need to be. When you get married under those pretenses, guess what? There is no issues. There are no issues. When I say issues, I'm talking about a kingdom issue. I'm talking about something you got to really sit down and go to war, you know, like you got to really work through this thing. You don't have those kind of issues because you chose the right woman. My wife brings me no stress in my life. She brings me no stress in my life. She juggling a whole lot with our, you know, two boys and with all the sports going on, them always playing two, three sports at a time. So now you got, you know, four to six sports that's going on. It's a lot going on, a lot of studying, Oldest wants straight A's, no A minuses. He don't even get A minus, so it's a lot of studying going on. She's juggling a lot, but she brings no stress to my life. No stress to my life. Now, she worked with me in my business, and I had to holler at her a little earlier today. I said, hey, baby, come on now. Hey, I'm finna have to hire another assistant because you ain't doing nothing. What you doing? Come on now. What going on? Where you list at? And, you know, I'm talking to her like that, but she know I'm um, jokingly serious, but that ain't stressing me. That don't bother me because I know what she not doing in our businesses. I know that time going to our boys. So I'm I'm not arguing. Ain't, I know that time ain't going to reality TV. You know what I'm telling you? So guess what? No stress in my life. No stress. And you know why I ain't got no stress? Because I don't have to worry about another woman texting my wife. I don't have to worry about hiding my phone. My phone could sit face up. And my wife got all my passwords. No stress, no worry. See, you stress and and you tight in the booty that you so tight in the booty. Now you done got hemorrhoids because of the stress on you because you sweating bullets wondering when this woman going to text your girlfriend or your wife. When somebody going to pop up on you. When somebody going to come up with something in the oven. When you gonna get exposed, when you gonna get caught, when you finna get found out. So you stress and you sweating, and now you going to telling people, man, marriage is terrible, man, marriage is terrible, man. Oh, man, all my boys, all my boys telling me, do not get married, do not get married. The reason why they saying that is because they still immature. It's because they grown boys. Or it's because they married wrong. And they married wrong because of where they were in their life and where they were operating from. But it's nothing wrong with marriage. It's something wrong with the people in the marriage. That's the issue. So guess what? I go to bed peaceful. I, I Man, I'd be so happy. I don't even be wanting to go to sleep. I'd be wanting to stay up. I told my wife yesterday. I think I told her yesterday or the day before. I say, look, listen, baby, we're going on a date every day. I say, even if that means us sitting down for an hour at home with us a cheese board and Netflix on, that's going to be our date. But I say every day I want to spend at least an undivided hour with you. I want to date you every day. I said that and I mean that. You hear me? I done had to work all day today, so I ain't get we ain't get to do breakfast today. She was trying to schedule it yesterday, but I was in crisis sessions yesterday with clients so i ain't get to schedule it but so last night we got to hung out and then the night we're gonna get to hang out i'm gonna get to hung out the night we're gonna get to hang out but guess what i want to date my wife every day i'm telling you the truth this i ain't capping i'm telling you the truth i think my phone tap so whoever got my phone tap and it could be a past enemy it could be the government. I don't know who it is. Somebody got my phone tapped because it be getting too hot, too fast, and I be hearing a microphone come on when my phone's sitting on my desk. It's just too many signs. But whoever got my phone tapped can tell you, can tell you I ain't doing no cheating and that I don't have no stress with my wife. They could tell you that. 
Now, we may sit down and discuss things, how we're going to get better, what, what need to work on, but it ain't no yelling, screaming, fussing, fighting, sleeping on the couch, going to bed mad, break up the makeup, got to leave, go get a hotel or stay with a friend for a few days. Ain't none of that. You know why? Because the oil flow from the head. And the head of this here household is me. And guess what? I'm living right and doing right. And you know what? My wife, she not the foot. She not the tail. She right there the head too. It's like a brain. I'm one half. She one half. But guess what? She the spine. What's a body without a spine? Picture that. What's a body without a spine? She the backbone. You hear me? She the rib. You hear me? She the better half of the brain. You hear me? Listen to what I'm telling you. So guess what? This is what guys don't understand, man. When you treat a woman right, and I'm going to say this, and then women ain't supposed to be watching this, but I'm going to tell you this. When you treat a woman right, I ain't going to better get this video up before my call. So this video up probably ain't going to be up about 4 o'clock today, so y'all forgive me. Now, listen. When you treat a woman right, you got, you got a queen, a wife, you hear me? You got you a chef, if she could cook better than you. Uh, you got you, and this don't sound right. This don't sound right. Uh, let's we'll say a home, a house manager, okay? Meaning she the CEO of home, like she know where stuff supposed to go, how stuff supposed to run. You got you a general, a court general. If you play basketball, you know what a court general is, like. You got to, guess what? You don't got to go to the club no more because you got yours coming down the pole. You know what I mean? You got your in-home nasty movie. You ain't got to have no subscription. You ain't got to be deleting your browser history. You got your in-home nasty movie. You got everything. My wife, I'm sitting here working today. I'm coaching a client. Guess what? She brought me... Uh, my favorite, what she bring me in here every day, toast bread with butter, fried egg, and turkey bacon. Tow it up. You hear me? Bring me all my water. You see all these here water? See all these here water? I just sit in here and drink water. I, I was feeling a little, a little down. What she brought me? Iced coffee. This all in here from my wife. You hear me? She's saying, look, if you do your part, I'm going to do what I do best. And I manage stuff. I'm a CEO. You know, you come up with the idea, but I'm going to help you execute them. You see what I'm saying? So it relieves stress. She is my personal assistant. She is my CEO. She is my manager. So I just sat down and just talked to her. I said, okay, baby, look, boom, I need to find a Rolex uh, service place. Who do the cert Rolex service for the best price? Okay, baby, boom, I'm sponsoring this AU team. I got the order. 16 pair of shoes. Can you find me a certain shoe? Hopefully a Kobe Bryant shoe that we could pay tribute with the team and I could get all that this one shoe in all these sizes. Okay, baby, boom. I need you. Can you go to home goods and help me find something for the office? You hear me? And then she'll come to me, say, Listen, I need you to take your son to soccer practice today. Every day. I need you to take him to soccer practice, six to seven thirty. I need you to pick the boys up today. Hey, I need you to put this up in the attic. Hey, I need you to get this down out the attic. Hey, I need you to call in the screen repair people get the screen. Hey, I need you to call and get the doors fixed. So she give me my honey-do list. I give her her honey-do list. So we a puzzle. We work together. She ain't doing no cheating. I ain't doing no cheating. And every now and then, she could scroll through my phone. She might get my phone. She might have my phone. Her dead. I might have her phone. Guess what? Ain't nothing to be found. Ain't nothing to be found. There is no stress. It's no stress. The only time where something gets stressful is when I ain't doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I look at a situation and I may say, mm, now I don't feel like I'm getting me enough of love making. Okay. And I want to blame. Hey, what's going on with this love making now? It's been a little bit. Been a little minute. What's going on? But when I look at the situation, I say, well, okay, you got her up. You know, she, she doing all the laundry, she doing all the cooking, she doing all the dishes. You know, she getting up at five, but you had her up talking about business till one. She only slept four hours, didn't even sleep four hours, because two hours in, you went snoring so loud, woke her up, so she really slept two hours. So then how you expect her to be functional the next day and want to be on a bike for you? 
So I got to coach myself and I say, okay, shut your mouth and listen to her talk. Let her talk about her day. Let her talk about what she got going on. Let her tell you because that's making love to her mind. Okay, now help her. Help her answer what she needs you to do. Now you do that. So now you done made love to her mind. You done lend a helping hand and you realize she ain't no handmaid. Yes, she do a whole lot, but she not your maid. So you get your butt up and you help. See, that's how I got to talk to myself. See, when you hard on yourself, life easier on you. So then I got to get my butt up and then guess what? When I start helping... And I'm and I'm helping out and I'm I'm asking what else can I do and I'm talking and I'm building and I'm listening to her. I might want to talk about business because that's how we earn a living. She might want to talk about a beauty blogger. She might want to talk about, you know, my son's day at school. She might want to talk about, you know, something that was said today. A meme she saw. She might want to talk about something that had nothing to do with money making. And I may not be that interested in that stuff other outside of my, my sons, but I'm sitting there and listen and talk about it and look at the memes and talk about it and just relax because she just, she chill. She live a chill life. So she ain't got no stress in her life. And guess what? When she got with me, we went from $8.50 an hour to $9 to $9.50. I maxed out on my job at $10 an hour and she wasn't working. So we went from that to where we are today, to where finance is not an issue. The, the big issue is just managing, just, just not being broke-minded. I got to go in a couple minutes. But let me help you understand this. If you do what you supposed to do, you stop being a dog, you stop cheating, you stop manipulating, you stop deceiving, you stop lying, you stop controlling. My brother, if you stop living in sin and become the man that God has called you to be, life will be easy on you. You're going to have your choice of your wife and you're going to be able to see clearly what a good woman look like. And then you're going to be able to court that woman, make love to her mind, do things the right way, get married to that woman, and then continue to wash her with love. And then guess what? When she reciprocates the love, it's going to knock your socks off because she created for love. See, you had to learn how to love. She was created for love. She came out the womb loving. You hear me? So when she reciprocate, man, listen here. That love going to be so strong, so powerful, so overwhelming. And listen to me, I'm trying to do every and anything for my wife, everything. Ain't nothing too much for my wife. Ain't nothing too much, baby. Here go three cars. You got three cars to choose from. Here go two, three, four watches. Here go eight, nine, ten bracelets. You you choose. Closet full. Walk in. Walk in closet. Build it out. She knocked down the back of my office. My office would be bigger than what it is, but that's her walk-in closet. Do what you need to do. I ain't want to do it at first, but I, but I allowed it to happen. I'm okay with it now. But it's nothing that's too much. What you? How many dates you want to go on? Where you want to go on a date? I let my wife take me to Europe for six weeks. Do you hear me? Six weeks. That cost me more than I wanted to spend. I went further than I wanted to go. But I let my wife take me over there with our sons because it meant some to her. And guess what? It blessed me. Baby, whatever you want, the world is yours. And that's how your heart changes when you become the man you need to be. I ain't got to put on. Ain't none of this no front. Ain't none of this no facade. This real talk. I'm telling you real life. I ain't even telling you everything because you're going to think I'm crazy how, how, how I treat my wife. You'll be like, what? Man, it's men who got multi-millions of dollars and ain't bought their wife that. Guess what? They ain't me. They cheating, they lying, or they still are not operating at their highest self. And that's why they don't love their wife on the level that they able to love her on because they still selfish and stuck in their ways. Hey, this Tony Gaston, God bless you. 
it's 3 p.m. I've been coaching all day. Now I'm coaching in this form, and now I got a coaching call right now. Somebody book me on mymentor.life. So if you have not went to mymentor.life, make sure you go there and book a session with a coach. It ain't got to be me because I'm, I'm the most expensive coach on there. But I'm the creator of the site. But it's other coaches as, as low as $25 an hour. Book a coach. Book a coach. Do a session. Fix your life. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. Check the other links in the description as well. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you have not. I will greatly appreciate it. And thank you to the Blessed Tribe for all your support. We'll talk soon.